somebody. Have fun. Hello. <laughs> so, Kurungozo National Park is one of my country's biggest richness. And I am honored that it is included in the Last Wild Places program. And as Mozambican, I'm very proud to be part of its story. Gorongosa is a 4,000 square kilometer protected area on the southern end of the Great Rift Valley in Mozambique. Its amazing features was once, have once supported the most dense wildlife populations in Africa. But populations and habitats were decimated during years of civil conflict until 1992. In 2008, the government of Mozambique signed and agreed for a long-term monitoring and long-term project with the CAR Foundation, starting a public-private partnership for joint management of the park, starting in this way the Gorongosa project. The Gorongosa project seeks to protect and restore the ecosystems of the park through science, conservation, ecotourism development, and community engagement and assistance. But the Gorongosa story is not only about restoring wildlife, it's also about restoring people's life. Our Gorongosa project is implementing a landscape scale project in which we care and we, talk, we, we take care about people and wildlife. And we create a great relationship between the two. Why? Because we have 200,000 people living in a buffer zone of the park. And we recognize that the greater Gorongos ecosystem is full of wildlife, but also full of people. And we need to find a way, the park needs to find a health, to create a healthy environment for both. There's nothing better we can do for people than help them break the cycle of poverty. Communities that receive benefits from a protected area, from a national park, employment, education, healthcare, will in turn support that park. It is a virtuous cycle. And then people can make better decisions which will ensure that wildlife thrives. But why will these people be willing to leave closed door to wildlife and in fact even help protect them from outside poachers? Because the park is the second largest employer in the province and one day will be the largest. We provide healthcare for more than 100,000 people per year with our health programs. We are in 50 schools with our Girls Club, an initiative to keep girls in school, to avoid early marriage, and help them to get a life full of opportunities. These girls getting education, support, and education will change these communities in the next years to come. But there's also a deeper reason. These wildlife and wildlands are our cultural and biological heritage. Our traditional beliefs are tied to these animals. I work in the scientific department at Gorongosa. Our department proudly provides scientific background for the management of the park. One of the things we do is monitoring our key species. I work with elephants. Our elephants are recovering fast. Now we have more than 700. It is a great increase from the only 100 who survived the war. But there's a lot of things we don't know yet. I'm just starting a PhD at the University of Kent, and I hope I can help to get a better understanding. As the elephant population grows back and they rehabit parts of the park where they were extirpated, we need to understand the ecological effects. 
and most critically, because these elephants do share a landscape with human villages, we need to find a way for humans and elephants to coexist. Last August, myself and colleagues started a long-term monitoring of our elephants in the greater Gorongosa Marromeo ecosystem to study the ecology and to ensure the protection and coexistence with people. Thanks to a grant from the National Geographic Society, we deployed GPS satellite colors and different lead females from different family units. We receive readings from these colors every hour. And we also receive alerts when our elephants are about to enter into communities. With only a few months of data, we'll be able to learn that some of these family groups always, always move together through the landscape. Some of them move more frequently than others. They're always on the move exploring the park. Most of them, most of them do cross the river to use the habitats on the other side of the river. Some use the forest patches and others visit farms to raid crops. In the most recent years, human elephant conflict has become a real part of the life on the southern border of the park. As in many places near protected areas, elephants will enter into communities and raid farms. Often, these crops are farmers' total livelihood, meaning that when they lose a field, they lose the harvest to feed their own family. But we are slowly getting to know when, where, and how these human-elephant interactions are happening, which enable us to think of different strategies to stop or to mitigate or reduce these encounters. One of the strategies is very well known and used. It has been tested in Gorongosa, it worked, but now we're gonna take it further, we're gonna implement it. So elephants cross the river to enter into communities. We're gonna add an exact these entry points in the communities. We're gonna use a natural fence to stop, by, stop them. It's a fence made by bees. It consists in a set of beehives linked through a rope, uh, suspended and linked through a rope, closing the passage, the entering points. As the elephants try to cross, it agitates the rope, which agitates the hives and agitates the bees. The bees get out and sting the elephants and they move back. These beehives will be taken care of by the women and men from our communities. In fact, in this exact day, my colleagues are just starting to train them in beekeeping. This will give to these communities a different experience with nature. They will help them to keep their farm safe and at the same time will give them alternative income from the honey the bee guards will produce. It is just one of examples of how cooperation within us and with nature works to mitigate one of our biggest challenges. But you don't understand these if you only think about elephants or if you only think about people. You only understand this when you see that we are all tied to the same fate. We are all living in the greater Gorongos ecosystem and we need to find a way to do this. People need a separate space for farms, markets, health clinics and schools, meaning that people need employment, education, healthcare. People need to get decent opportunities in life. And the elephants? Elephants need a lot of land upon which to live, intact habitats, protection, so they keep growing and they keep the ecosystem healthy. When the restoration, when Go the Gorongosa restoration project started, we only had 10,000 large animals. Last year, 
Our wildlife census counted more than 100,000 large animals. Decades ago, I, I mean, 10 years ago, we only had few lions. Now we have more than 100. For the first time in decades, you can see zebras and wild dogs in the landscapes of Gorongosa. That is why the landscape scale approach we're in with fund, we fund, plan, and implement programs to our national park and our surrounding communities is the way of the future. It is all possible, and we're working hard to make it happen. A long-term sustainability of our lands, our people, our wildlife. Today I share with you that we are moving on from the past and building a better future through conservation of wildlife and long-term landscape community engagement and support. Thank you.